My name's John Severe. Uh, I was the, uh, I'm the son of uh, Valentine Severe and Joanna Goat. In 1740, my father moved from Baltimore and settled in the Shenandoah Valley. He was a tavern keeper, he was a fur trader, and a land speculator. In 1745, I was born in near Newmarket, Virginia. At the age of 16, I fell in love with a beautiful girl named Sarah Hawkins. We were married. And I, at an early age, followed in my father's footsteps. I opened a tavern and helped plat Newmarket. Later in the 1730s, my brother and I began to visit the settlements in the wilderness south of Newmarket. In 1773, my family and I moved to Carter County. And then in 1776, we moved down to the Watauga settlements. Now, the Watauga settlements were west of the Appalachian Mountains, and the king had sent a decree that no loyal subjects of the crown were allowed to settle west of the Appalachian Mountains. So we became independent of the crown even before the first hostilities took place in Lexington and Concord. And I quickly became a leader amongst the Watagans. And in 1776, we had settled there and began to build Fort Lee. At that time, we found that the Cherokee were raiding the settlements and before the fort was safe, we retreated to Fort Caswell. And there were 75 of us men in the militia. I was second in command under John Carter there. And the Cherokee attacked the fort. At that time, we had some young ladies who were out doing chores outside the fort. And before all of them could get inside, they had to close the doors to the fort. And one of the young ladies was left outside, was running along the wall of the fort, and the Cherokee were trying to capture her. And I couldn't just stand there and let that happen. So I leaned over the palisades, and I reached down and grabbed this young lady, and I pulled her right up over the top of the fort wall and into the fort and into safety. Her name was Catherine Sherrill. And as fate would have it, our paths would meet again. Because in 1780, my beloved wife Sarah passed away. It was a very hard loss, as we had several children. But that same year, fate brought Catherine Cheryl and I together again, and we were married. Now, Catherine was a beautiful woman, and in fact, the Scots-Irish people didn't call her Catherine. They called her Bonnie for beautiful. They called her Bonnie Kate. And she was my wife until I passed away. That same year, 1780, the British decided that they would begin a campaign in the southern colonies as they had stalemated against Washington in the northern colonies. And they captured Charleston and Savannah and a great battle took place called the Battle of Camden between the militias of the South and the British Royal Regulars. Well, most of the militias were routed. In fact, the North Carolina militia was the only militia that was able to uh, hold their ground there. And so it became a major victory for the British and they got very confident. Now, for some reason, the British decided that those of us in the Watauga settlements were going to be very loyal to the crown. Even though we had already become an independent of the crown and had an independent governmental association. But just to drive the point home that we were to be loyal to the crown, they sent us a message. And they told us that we would join their loyalist army or they were going to destroy our settlement 
by sword and by fire. And we determined that we were not going to allow that to happen by God. And so, myself and Colonel Shelby met at Sycamore Shoals with the men under our command, the militia men under our command. And while we were there, we got word that while we were going to be engaging the regulars, that they were going to send the Cherokee to raid our settlements. So we sat down and we picked every third man and sent them back to the settlements to guard the settlements against Cherokee attacks. And then we were joined by William Campbell and 400 of his Virginia militia. We had about 500, about 250 apiece between myself and Colonel Shelby. And on the way, we were also joined by Major McDowell. His forces had been routed earlier by those men. But we began to track them down. And on October 7th, we caught up to them at Kings Mountain. We surrounded the mountain and began to attack them on top of the mountain where they had established their defenses. Now, typically, they were armed and dressed as British soldiers, even though the only true British soldier was Colonel Ferguson, the arrogant man who swore up and down that he was going to destroy us or have us join him, and he swore up and down that God would not be able to move him off that mountain. So we charged up with our rifles, and when we got in close, they formed a bayonet charge and charged at us. We didn't have capability for bayonets, most of us, so we gave the ground. And they charged down and found no one there. Then as they returned to reform and go back to their defensive position, we followed them and continued to fire on them. They made a second bayonet charge, and we gave the ground, went back down the mountain. They reformed, went back to their defensive position and we made a third push up. By the time we made that third push up, the accuracy of our rifles had proven the day. There weren't enough men to defend their defensive positions. And so we gained the top of the mountain. It was about that time that Patrick Ferguson made his attempt to get out of there. Two of my men took him down, shot him right out of the saddle. His foot hung up in the stirrup. Horse drug him down the mountain. By the time he got to the bottom, he had a lot more holes in him where the rest of the militia had fired on him. And we gathered the men who surrendered together. And we thought, well, if God can't move him off the mountain, then we'll leave him there forever. So we had them take him back up there and that's where he was buried. Later on, after Kings Mountain, we returned. Some of our men went and fought in the Battle of the Cowpens. But we also knew that the Indians, the Cherokee, were attacking our settlements. And so on December 16th, we chased down a large force of Cherokee warriors at Boyd's Creek. We caught them camped there, and we attacked and defeated them pretty soundly. Seventeen eighty one, John Carter the man who'd led our militias, passed away, and I was named as Commandant, uh, Ca uh, Colonel Commandant of the Washington County Militia. Then, in 1784, we formed our own state. We called it Franklin. I was chosen to be the governor of Franklin. And for about four years, there was a contest between whether we were the state of Franklin or part of the state of North Carolina. Over that four years, our state of Franklin government kind of weakened, and by 1788, we had dissolved, and the governor of North Carolina had me arrested. I was taken to Morganton, North Carolina for trial, but the sheriff there released me from jail and sent me on. 1789, there was a new election and a new governor was elected and I swore my allegiance to North Carolina. Then in 1790, 
we became part of the Southwest Territory. William Blunt was elected as the governor and I was commissioned as the Brigadier General of the entire Southwest Territory. We continued to have problems with the Indians, but as I had already negotiated treaties as the state of Franklin governor, I continued to negotiate treaties. And in 1796, we became the great state of Tennessee. I was elected as the first governor of Tennessee, and I served six terms as governor. Not consecutively, but served six terms as governor. My last term was in 1807. After that, I was elected to the Tennessee State Senate, and shortly thereafter, I was elected to the U.S. Senate and served as a U.S. Senator for the state of Tennessee, 2nd District. Later, I was in Alabama, negotiated a treaty for some land from the Creeks, and was surveying that land in 1815. That's when I passed away.